You're listening to the God Stories Radio Podcast. Bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement to the world 24 hours a day. The power of the Christian testimony. Join the God Movement. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Beck, host of Welcome Home on Good Life 45. And you're listening to my good friends, Fritz, Mike, and Tina, right here on God Stories Radio, bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement to the world through the power of the Christian testimony. Keep listening for a big blessing from the Lord. Official. It's official. <laughs> Session 195. <laughs> you betcha. Uh-huh. We're going to have a good time tonight. We're here we with a, one of my best friends of all time, Mr. Bo Duke in the house Woo-hoo. tonight. And uh, he, a special treat. He has brought his guitar. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. We are in for a treat tonight. All right. We like those treats. Yes, we do. We love us some treats. <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody on Mixler. Uh, everybody that's listening live there, you have dialed into a good one tonight. How do they get on Mixler? It's uh, M-I-X-L-R, Mixler.com slash God dash stories dash radio. Or they can go to God Stories Radio. They can go to GodStoriesRadio.com. It's right on the front page, and they can just press listen now. And if they sign up? Yeah, they'll get notified. Right. Each time that we go live, they'll be notified that says God Stories Radio is now live. Drop what you're doing <laughs> and get there immediately they get on before Mixer. you miss a blessing from God. Uh-huh. Before you miss hearing Fritz say the session number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there just because this is a special something. Something special. It's always special when we get together. Sure you know? it is. It's Especially special. since it's been two weeks. I, I mean, know. I, I was itching to get here today. Actually, I did. I came an hour early. Were you itching? <laughs> Boy, you weren't kidding. When you popped your head in the studio at six o'clock, I was scared to death. You thought it was seven. I did. It wasn't even spring forward, but there was Mike. There was uh-huh. Mikey. <laughs> came bearing gifts. Uh, the uh, Cinnabon. Cinnabon for the Colombian Supremo. Nice. I know, man. And a big shout out to Mac. He hooked us up with some coffee a couple of weeks ago. His, I guess his mom works at Starbucks. Yeah. Oh, and he gave me a wonderful. a thing of Brazilian beans. I'm like, man. Tasty stuff. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Unbelievable. Free plug and shout out Free for plug and shout out to Mac. <laughs> Youth pastor, FUMC. He's next on the hot seat to oh, be yeah. here. We're going to have Chris Bone. In the house. March 7th. March 7th. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pastor Doug has uh, made a commitment to be here as well. And uh, hopefully, uh, uh, shout out to him. I know he's on the road right now. Tending to his mother. That's been, uh, I know, uh, uh, kind of touch and go for him. Yeah, it's a tough, that's a really tough journey with yeah. your parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, prayers, our hearts and prayers go out to Pastor Doug. We love you. We're praying for you. And speaking of prayers, um, before I got here this afternoon, um, I want to have a uh, an adjustment at Dr. Paul's. Uh, Dr. Cla- Paul Sorchi? Yes. Cool. Claremont Life Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. Matt, who used to uh, work there and everything else, he did wonders with me. As uh, Paul was telling me, he says, you were a mess when you came in here. And yes, I was. Um, but Dr. Matt, um, he was... I think his session was in the 50s somewhere. He came in and did his session and did his testimony to a certain extent. And um, when uh, Dr. Paul saw me, he says, you know, I've been in contact with uh, Dr. Matt. And he went to the dentist to have um, a root canal. 
and one thing led to another, I guess uh, infection and stuff, and he's been having a heart attack after another. Oh, no. Because of it. And he's partially paralyzed and, and stuff like that, and he has uh, no one uh, basically around to, to help because he's like a few states up north from here. And uh, so I told uh, Dr. Paul that I would uh, shout out uh, anybody who's listening, please join us in prayer for Dr. Matt uh, for healing and um, help to get that healing and help to help him through the, the day, actually. You know, and, and seeing that guy when he was on the show, he was just the epitome of health. Well, when he came on, he also, I remember he went to the beach. Yeah. And he stepped on some yep. jagged rocks, and that got infected on his foot and everything oh, else. And he man. almost, and I think he did actually lose a toe or so because of it. I think so. So, I mean, so by the last couple of years for Dr. Matt, it's been, and he isn't that old either. No. So, again, please join God Stories Radio in prayer for Dr. Matt. We'd appreciate it for sure, and so won't he. Absolutely. I'm good praying for you, Dr. Matt. I hope you're listening. I really do. He was a an avid listener for a while. Uh, he was. to always be a friend of the show, and we're praying for you, buddy. Absolutely. Absolutely. It helped me out immensely. Well, I heard a rumor when you got here uh, tonight. Sh- yeah, shout-outs and. And. I'm ready for the and. Well, oh, I guess yeah. I have you, the honors. You have the honors. What should we do first? Uh, let's do the Facebook likes. Do we have any Facebook likes? We sure do. All right. So last week's guest, Miss Christy Overton Johnson. Thank you, Christy. Okay, we thank appreciate you, Christy. that. Yes, we do. Loving your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Love her on the whole. She's an amazing woman. Yes, she is. Um, and uh, Tommy Moore. I Tommy know, Moore. We, we know, know that Tommy. guy. Yes, we do. We know <laughs> Uncle Tommy. In I fact, think, he's probably at CR tonight, isn't he? Good old Tommy. Yeah, yeah I think we uh, read his testimony uh, a while back. Was it Tommy that went? I think we read it. She, he wrote it, and I think we read it. Did we really? I think so. I so want him on this show so bad. Oh, I do too. Gotta I get still, him. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to happen. We'll gotta make happen. that one happen. I'm sure it will. And Ron Bridge. Ron Bridge. Thank you, Ron. Uncle Ron. I work with Ron every day. Oh, he, you know him? He's okay. a facilities... Uh, manager there uh, at uh, FUMC. Kind of a jack of all trades, man. There's nothing Ron can't do. Thank you for liking us on Facebook, Ron. And Michael P. Ruffin. Michael P. Ruffin. Welcome to the GSR family. Thank you, family. Yes, thank thank you. you so much for liking us. Right. What's up, Michael? <laughs> you know Michael? I do know Michael. Ah, yeah. that's awesome. All right. Well, anybody else out there that is listening or and if you anywhere you are, if you can do it, please like us on Facebook. Fritz loves to hear the shout outs. I really do, and it avoids that awkward silence in that part of the show. And <laughs> you know. Right. And wasn't there an and on that? There is, yep. But it seems like we're going down rather than up on the numbers. I thought we were at ninety six, but you no. have ninety four no, here. Ninety four. Okay. Yeah, we were at 93 yes. for okay. the longest time. Yes, don't know why that number stuck in my head. Maybe because it's session 196 next week. Who knows? Um, but country number 94, welcome Algeria. All right, Algeria. Algeria. Wow. Yes. That is fantastic. Thank you for listening to us out there in Algeria. Man. And what's the time difference in Algeria right now? <laughs> Well, they're in Africa. So it's probably I, seven, eight, ten hours yeah, somewhere around there. At least. Yeah, so they're not listening live, I'm sure. No, I don't think so. They'll be listening it's, to... Uh, it's like four, five, six o'clock in the morning right now. Yeah. They'll have to catch Bo on recorded. <laughs> but that's cool, though. <laughs> well, thank you in, out there in Algeria. Absolutely. Thanks, Fantastic. Guys. What else is going on, guys? Anything? Well, mm-hmm. we do have a... Uh, Someone that uh, wrote into us, and uh, his name is uh, Gregory Reese, and he sent a comment that uh, he says, I am wanting to share my testimony, how God gave me my vision back from diabetes, and I am doing a 30-day challenge from Portland to New York City on a bicycle to do diabetes awareness and share my testimony. You can reach me anytime on my cell. I am in Pacific time zone, and so he just goes on and on. He's doing it. My bike ride is July 
and a 3,200 mile, 3,208 miles from Portland to New York City. It's going to be another Forrest Gump, laugh out loud. <laughs> so we got to contact him, and he wants to give his testimony, so we'll be looking forward to Gregory Reese oh, and his man. testimony. That is so awesome that people are reaching out to us. It is. Absolutely. One, it means people are listening. Two, it means God is doing something in their lives and, and mm-hmm. pricking their hearts to share their testimony. So I'm sorry, you said he's bike riding from where in California to Portland, Oregon? I think it's Portland, Oregon to, to New, New York, York City. City. Oh, to Whoa. New York. So yeah, that's he's going over 3,000 miles. Oh, yeah. 3,208. That's what he's got written down here. And to have diabetes, to do a trek like that? Whoa. Wow, that's that's amazing. Mm-hmm. That yeah. really he's, is amazing. He's probably going to have a car follower, I would I'm imagine. Sure, I'm sure. But wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'd love to have you on, uh, Gregor Reese. Uh, Greg, hope you're listening. Yeah, hope you're listening and uh, expect the, uh, Tina to probably be contacting you very shortly. Very shortly, you bet. Thanks, we Greg. Get that testimony on. And uh, I just want to say a special thanks to uh, a couple of people that have, you know, pressed the button this week. Uh, we are, uh, you know, in need of, of some equipment. We've got some equipment that's older, and uh, we just appreciate the folks that have. It's almost six years old. This yeah. Uh, that have, uh, you know, pressed the button and have supported the ministry. And it's just, it's a blessing. And plus, it's tax time. So every little bit helps. So. Right. But we're talking uh, the big computer yeah. and, and uh, what's that other part there? Huh? Computer. Yeah, the most mostly the computer because she's old and uh, and but she's been a good old girl and uh, she's uh, you know shout out to Jay Orr who came over here and uh, rescued me for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. So uh, he doesn't know how long it'll last. But. Yeah, but but it is what it is, and we just we just thank each and every one of you that that. Um, not only give monetarily, but just pray for us on a regular Absolutely. basis. We we uh, we know we're taking ground for the kingdom, and then Satan doesn't like that. Let's call it what it is, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll we'll take all the prayer and support we can get. And in turn, we're praying for you as well. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So it's enough about that. Yes, God's did, will. It's God's bill. Did you want to mention any names, or are you? Good. Well, I don't know. Um, I was going to mention her name, but I'm not going to because I didn't know if, if right. she'd be comfortable with that or not. So, so I won't. Well, okay. Unless, uh, That's fine. So again, you know, we're, you know, we're looking for a uh, little help. Uh, the, the computer is uh, going on six years old and we had someone come in and kind of uh, uh, give it a little time, so to speak, but he doesn't know how <laughs> yes, much time he he's going to give it. He's a miracle worker. I'm yeah. going to tell you right now, that guy is smart. So, um, so we don't have to, uh, have yep. any downtime, so to speak, that we right. can work on that in the meantime and, and have so. a, a new, new one sitting. So we don't have to worry about, uh, going down for any time because we just went through two weeks and yeah. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> you guys are really <laughs> chatty tonight. <laughs> I know, man. I've heard Mike say that two weeks is too long. Two weeks is too long. It is. And Mikey was missing it. And and we do it once a week. I would like to do it if we could every day. But well, you never know. Whatever God plans. Yeah, that's right. Whatever he plans. I'd like to be syndicated. I'd like to do it every day. Uh-huh. Have a morning talk show or something. Who knows? Who knows what God's got in store? But right now... He's made us the stewards of this, and we just uh, and we we're very, very thankful. Very thankful. Two so, weeks is too long. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> do we have a guest here? We do. <laughs> He's waiting patiently as we banter. <laughs> uh huh. About the two. Why weeks don't you introduce? Being I too like long. the banter. He likes banter. <laughs> I like it. He does. <laughs> Guys, you're in for a treat tonight. One of my best friends is Bo Duke. He's here with us tonight, and it's been a long time getting him here. It's been a process. Bo's very busy. Uh, on Thursday nights, he's usually conducting worship at uh, Celebrate Recovery or mm-hmm. uh, Hashtag CR. And uh, what a wonderful group of people. Those those are our peeps, and I know that we have gone there. Uh, me and Mike and Trish have gone there and actually shared our testimony, mm-hmm. have had a wonderful time. Shout out, Tommy Moore, you're next. Yes, Be prepared. that's where I met Tommy Moore. You're next in the chair. Just a little bit I heard. He's awesome. And I had the privilege of 
of jamming with Bo and playing drums behind him as he was leading worship at Real Life. And, you know, we just uh, struck up a good bond and a, and a great friendship and and through the through music and, and just mm-hmm. it was just an automatic kindred spirit mm-hmm. and our styles of music and how we grew up and just things we could relate to. We just automatically bonded and have had a great friendship ever since. And Bo got in touch with me a while back and said, hey, man, I'm starting a new, uh, I won't steal his thunder, but we're starting a new service over here. Can I need a drummer. Can you come play? And uh, through a very, very long story and a lot of circumstances, it ended up happening. You know, I come to find out later on, he was uh, at their staff meeting, which I attend now, which is really interesting. <laughs> they would have prayer for me. And uh, well, I just, uh, I broke down when I heard that. Mm-hmm. Just amazing. So, and I met uh, Bo Duke when I was on the production team at Real Life. Yeah, and I used to send him on stage when yep. he used to lead worship. Or yeah, man. It. So I just always talked about Bo. I, I, it was just he was just wiry and out of control, and Uh-oh. it wasn't he wasn't like everybody else. It was just had a freedom about him, and I just I love that. You know, I just I love that freedom about Bo. So, uh, like I said, it was <clears throat> it was instantaneous friendship. So. I could talk all night about Bo, but I'm sure Bo would like to talk a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. So without further ado, my buddy, Bo Duke. What's up? Hey, right. welcome well, to the you, show, thanks man. Thanks for coming. I'm stoked to be here. Thanks for having me. The yeah. studio is awesome, by the way. Oh, thank you, bro. We appreciate that. Yes, we do. I know you have some special people in your life you'd love to give a shout out to. I yeah. do. I would love to say hello to my beautiful wife, Allie who wanted to be here tonight, but she's a school teacher and she had some kind of boring <laughs> meeting with the faculty or something tonight that she couldn't make it. Um, hopefully she could maybe get in later, but I uh, definitely want to say hello to Allie. And, um, no, and Allie, I don't think she can sit long through that stuff. No, she, she gets restless. She probably gets restless. <laughs> <laughs> she's, a, she's a tough customer, so, and she's a heck of a school teacher. And, uh, uh, shout out to Allie. We miss you. Partner in crime, for sure. But, yeah, it's awesome to be here. Um, I could spend all night just talking about our friendship. Oh, couldn't we? Getting, yeah, I got plenty just, of coffee, man. You can hang out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. What would you like me to you just want, to you, give you guys some insight to, you know, I got to I just love the, the names he gave his dogs. So one of them's named Bailey and the other one is named Stevie Nicks. So you can tell what kind of uh, <laughs> music fanatic he is, you know, just by the choice of name. He well, gave I know. Right. Dog, Iconic. Right? <laughs> I love that. Stevie Nicks, man. Fleetwood Mac. When she was wearing that all white, she mm-hmm. almost looked like a ghost up there. But, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, she's she's a pistol for a dog. She keeps us on our toes. So, so Bo, where were you born? Where'd you grow up? I was born in uh, good old Tallahassee, uh-huh. Florida. Oh, you're native. I am. A, That's awesome. I was on the opposite in end in Fort Lauderdale. Yep. Wow. How about that? Yeah. See, now some of the common threads are kind of unfolding. Uh, I did not know that that you were a native. Not too many of those native Floridians still here. No, it's where, like we're a. Where were you? West Palm or Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. That's right. And so did you stay there most of your life? I lived there uh, until I was 15 years old. Oh, and then okay. my family relocated uh, when they built the training center in Claremont. Mm-hmm. Um, my family moved down. And it was cool because it was right when I was going into ninth grade. So it wasn't a big transition. Mm-hmm. Like you're going into high school. So that's always a new experience anyway so so at 15 you were a freshman in high school maybe maybe it was 14 okay I'm trying to remember you're so you're i had two years of kindergarten so i was i couldn't finger paint very well so my mom <laughs> held me back <laughs> <laughs> so they they held you back for your finger painting skills <laughs> yeah we moved down and um i had a good upbringing i'm the oldest of four boys oh okay wow um my uh, my parents are both educators. My mom's a teacher. My dad was a teacher. Um, my dad was also a football coach. Um, so sports and and uh, education were a big part of of my childhood. But also music was huge. My mom's side of the family, they're a bunch of, bunch of country folk from Plant City, Florida. I mean, there's oh, a whole Plant bunch City, of them. Man, say no more. Yep. 
I remember we used to go down to my grandma's house when I was younger, and we'd have these uh, hoedowns uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. or out sings. on the land. People, they call them sings. Yeah. And we'd, it would just it would just be a jam session. And I remember uh, when my mom, my mom telling this story that when she married my dad, my dad didn't know how to play any instruments. And so they'd have these big hoedowns and everybody come over to my grandma's house and, on the land and they'd have these bonfires. And he, and he was like, I'm tired of being left out of the band because uh, he, his job was just to park cars. And he hated that. He was like, I want to be a part of this. So she made him learn how to play the stand-up bass oh, so man. he could join the band. So, there you go. Bull fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> so music, man, that was that was a big part of my, my upbringing for sure. And um, church, can't say it enough, man. We were in church every Sunday, every Wednesday night. I mean, we went to a, a Baptist church, First Baptist Church in Tallahassee, big big Baptist church right downtown. Uh, next to Florida State, the um, the campus there, and I'm not one of those kids who can sit here and say that I had a, a tough life growing up. Man, I had parents who loved me and 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 raised me in the ways of the Lord and had me learning to, you know, getting the getting the Word of God. Even I remember being little and my parents sitting down with me and opening the Bible and saying, "Let's let's get into this." Well, so praise God. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. We don't get to hear that very no, often. No, it's cool, man. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I feel very fortunate and blessed that I was able to come from that upbringing. And I think, you know, a lot of people will I, I'll hear this repeatedly from people who have had a similar upbringing to you. They say, oh, well, I don't have a very interesting story to tell, but I actually always think it's the most interesting because when the hand of God is on you from a young child and steering your life and you're listening mm-hmm. to him, you have such a different impact on the world. And just a, a different type of wisdom, too, you know, which is something that I've noticed with, um, I always remember Caitlin Sahad saying the same thing. She was um, part of A&K Music when her and Adam mm-hmm. came and gave their testimonies. But, um, and I think the same thing with Barbara Beck, too. You know, she came from from a very, you know, um, loving, loving, and uh, Christ-focused type of home, mm-hmm. and you know they think that their testimonies don't have the same type of impact, but I I would argue to to say they do. Well, they, they see things of... differently, and it's uh, interesting to to hear from that perspective and what life was like through those eyes. And I think your friend too, Chris Musgrove, mm-hmm. was the same yeah. way as well. Yeah, yeah. And look at what he's doing. I mean, it's just amazing. I know so it. let me ask this then. Was there a point, usually in my walk, God brought a, a bunch of young men into my circle, actually helped me out along the early part of my walk uh, because I couldn't get around uh, car-wise or to church and stuff like that. But And some of them were brought up like you. Mm-hmm. Was there a point where most of them did kind of like walk away a little bit? Oh, absolutely. I'm one of those people. And I credit so much of, of my restoration and, and or God's restoration in me because of that upbringing, the stuff that was instilled in my, my heart as a little kid <laughs> when later on in life when I had all kind of troubles and problems. Like my parents used to just pray, like, if you raise your child in the ways of the mm-hmm. Lord— and, you know, when I was going through that kind of stuff, you know, to, it was just kind of one, in one ear, out the other. But now it makes all, all the sense in the world. Like, they they knew that, that God was going to protect me, and they, I don't know, there, there's just been times in my life where I can just get down on my knees and say, thank you, God, for giving me um, these kind of people to raise me, these these kind of parents these that, that, that didn't give up on me, that just covered mm. me in prayer. Mm. You know, as I made boneheaded decisions, as we all have done. Mm. I know you had a praying granny. Ooh, absolutely. Two of them. Wow. <laughs> See, there you go. See? There's always a praying granny in yeah. there, man. I'm telling you what. And, and I think about, you know, with my life, you know, when God found me 12 years ago, um, I, as far as I knew, I'm the only one in my family that knows Jesus for who he is. I didn't have that praying mother, father, or family. 
uh, grandparents or whatever. I didn't. So I just praise Father that after the two by four beside the head, um, uh, I finally listened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what it took you. A couple took, of knuckleheads. Yeah, me and it you, took you a know, two by four. That's that for sure. Right, right out from under me, man. <laughs> not a tap on the shoulder. It was a two by four. So what did it look like for you, Bo, when you kind of started to stray away? Um, it was just, so when, when we moved down to, to Claremont and I was a high schooler and, you know, I was kind of just your average teenager trying to find his place and mm -hmm. find the things that I liked and the crowds that I wanted to hang out with. And, you know, I, high school was, was kind of just whatever. It wasn't until after I graduated when I was like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I know that I love music. Um, but I didn't know really what kind of path that was going to take me on. So, you know, I, uh, I was playing in bands and stuff starting in 10th grade. I, we had a band in high school. We were terrible, but we thought we were rock stars. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you know, but I was like, this is cool, man. I love playing music. And, uh, it was, it's after I graduated and, and um, I moved out to Orlando and I was going to Valencia <clears throat> community college, just mm -hmm. taking a couple classes here and there just to appease my parents. But really all I wanted to do was turn up that Marshall amplifier to 11 <laughs> right on. and get rowdy, you know? And, um, we just, we started, we started playing in the, in the, in bars and clubs and we, we were, we were children. We were, we weren't even, you know, we were 18 years old and just chasing this, this rock and roll dream. And mm -hmm. it started just kind of, you know, I, that kind of consumed my mind and I just, I stopped being, I, I didn't go to church anymore. I just kind of broke off all the good, those healthy relationships in my life. I just kind of just said, you know, God, I'll get with you when I got time for you. But right now mm, you're not, you're yeah. not my priority. Didn't fit the image, yeah. huh? I can, I can recall that thought process a few mm -hmm. times. But it was cool. But like going back though, also my parents were, were good of, or allowing me to, um, discover how much Jesus loved me and let me make that decision. You know, a lot of kids they get who are raised in the faith, you know, that I made a decision to follow Jesus when I was 11 years old. My parents felt like I was old enough to understand what it meant for, for Jesus to die for my sins. Sure. So I, be, I became a Christian when I was 11 years old. So, you know, up until all that time, up into high school, I, you know, things were good. I was, I was, a uh, a key member of our Fellowship of Christian Athletes organization at our yeah, high school at South Lake High School. Yep. That was a big deal. Um, our youth group was 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 good at the church I was going to. Um, things were good. It just wasn't till after I graduated, where I high school, where I really started to kind of walk away from the Lord. And then this kind of set off a series of events that really took me far away from Him. But my journey back home, so sweet, mm -hmm. so yeah. sweet. God is so good. Well, Very and, prodigal son like. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. and I believe I believe I do and it it just keeps coming back every time. And I've said this before that uh, I believe when someone really and truly gives theirself to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will bring them back at some point, mm -hmm. somehow, some way. Amen. And I you know, Bo, you said something really important that I I wanted to call out too is that you know, your parents gave you enough space to let you start making some of your own decisions, which, you know, typically around that 17, 18 year old time frame in a teenager's life, you know, they're ready to start be trying to become an adult. They're trying to figure out what that looks like for mm -hmm. themselves. Right. And at the end of the day, we all have to make the choice of Jesus. We can't ride on the coattails of our parents. Mm -hmm. No, nope. we can't you know, assume that we're just covered. We have to make the choice ourselves. Yeah. So. My dad would give me just enough rope to hang myself. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I learned. But, uh, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Bo, take us on that journey home. Take yeah. us on that journey that from so wild cool. man to, well, see what happened. So what we moved out to Orlando, um, we were playing, three, four nights a week in all the different places, downtown Orlando, all the way to coast to coast, Daytona to Tampa, and, and just playing, you know, and 
once again, we thought we were really good, but we weren't all that good. <laughs> the thing that kind of bums me out is like I grew up listening to like such great music was always around yeah. me. And for some reason, when I got into high school and after high school, man, I got really like into punk rock music, which was not really in my wheelhouse. Um, Are you an 80s child? I, I like a lot of good 80s punk bands. I will say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 70s and 80s had the best music ever made. Yeah, yeah I always point. tell people I wish I was born in like 1955, so I would have been a teenager in like that er, late 60s, made. early. Because that's, man, that's it's good rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, you aren't kidding. Some Dude, of the music come out today, man. It, I feel like an old man. I right, don't know what the heck's going like on. It. Do you like the Dead Kennedys? Ooh, Dead Kennedys. Clash. Oh, yeah. oh a Clash, yeah. Yeah. So we we were kind of these rebellious Rebellious kids. And I will tell a funny story. Um, my last year of high school, uh, our youth group at the church I was going to was kind of falling apart because our youth minister left. And 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 that's such a, a critical thing for a it teenager is, yeah. to be able to be plugged into a church. And a youth group is such a such an awesome way for a, a kid to be connected. And um, I didn't really know where I was going to go. And I heard about this church on Hook Street. In Claremont, where they had this youth pastor there that going. that liked to have skateboarders <laughs> come to his church <laughs> and hang out and, and set up skateboard ramps all before the service, and we'd hang out. Uh, that guy was Justin Miller. Justin Miller. <laughs> Justin Miller was a huge influence on my life as a young man, and just that, that that senior year was was cool because I, you know, sometimes when you're into the punk rock and skateboarding, and you're kind of an outcast. You know, I was sure. I love sports, but I was never going to be a great athlete. Let's be real. I'm a five foot seven white boy. <laughs> God, God bless me with some, some things, but I wasn't going to. So, you know, I was kind of always felt a little bit like an outcast. And that was cool that Justin had this church where he's like, just come as you are. And I met so many cool people. Um, and th and that's another thing, man, that like, even though, even though I ran away from it, it was still there. So when I decided to make the decision saying, all right, Jesus, I'm with you. All these things that had happened for me when I was a young and, you know, they just kind of came back to the surface. And so, yeah, long story short. So after um, af after playing music and, and for two years in Orlando, really just, like I said, going to going to Valencia, but not really doing anything, not had no idea what I wanted to be. I just knew I love music. Uh, we decided one day as a band, we were sitting down after practice and we we're like, Let's get out of here. Let's uh, let's move to California. Let's just pack up and go. So, uh, I remember having that conversation with my folks, and my mom was crying her eyes out, and she said, "That's two thousand miles away. Am I ever gonna see you?" I'm like, "I'll see you on Christmas, Easter, hopefully." Um, but I'm, I'm out of here. So, how old were you then? I was twenty, mm -hmm. nineteen, just, just a baby, youngin, didn't know anything. Just uh, like I said, my mind was so focused on music. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted that's that's all I cared about. Really. So what part of California did you go to? So we first went to Riverside. Okay. Um, my drummer and I got a job. We used to do this. Uh, you know, uh, have you seen vehicle wraps where people cover the? Oh car? yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were vehicle wrap installers. Oh, that's wow. how we paid the bills. Wow, very cool. It was actually actually made pretty good money back then for, yeah. you know, for how old it was. Um, that's how we paid the bills. And uh, we did that. And we were in Riverside for a year. But i um, not sure if you're familiar with yep. Riverside, but it's inland. Mm -hmm. It's cool. But we want to get, you know, closer to the water. Yeah, California coast. gal out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where are you from in California? San Jose. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. That's a lot cooler than Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did that. And, uh, and then we moved from Riverside to Corona, which okay. is right down the road, yeah. a little closer to the beach. And I actually lived with our bass player's family in their garage and a Mexican family. They didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> so that was, that was cool because that, I'll tell you what, I, I ate really good. That lady could mm -hmm. cook some straight up food. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> So, so that was fun. I mean, you know, we were just, like I said, I didn't have a lot of ambition. All I knew is I just love music. Wasn't walking with the Lord. Uh, my band members, we, it, I just didn't have any accountability either. I didn't have anybody pushing me or, 
you know, saying, hey, let's keep the main thing, the main thing. That The main thing was so far out of the picture at that point, and it mm-hmm. just got worse. Like, we we played, we got better as a band. I, I really felt like we really, I mean, we we worked hard at it. Mm-hmm. We, we'd stay in the studio for, you know, 15, 16 hours a day wow. just hashing things out, man, studying. And then um, we moved uh, from Corona to Long Beach for, for a year and a half, and that was awesome. We really really started to get serious with music then and we were playing all over the place uh, long got- beach is cool i've been out there a, uh, a bunch of times and and been to the uh not the arena but the uh complex out there the uh well you know the uh, what do you call it the the queen mary the boat no not the boat but the uh, convention center oh, okay there in long beach the big convention yeah, center yeah. and and did several shows in there and I ate at the uh, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Oh yeah, out there on the That's very, Snoop Dogg's joint. very first yeah. <laughs> Chicken and Waffles. Yes, sir. It's good food. Long Beach was uh, was pretty killer. Yeah, that and that was good, man. We we started to get a little more serious, um, more eclectic of a crowd too. Yeah, 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 definitely. But I, I I've always enjoyed being around people that are different than myself and just I just feel like it it helps you grow in your character and understanding folks and that was good for me it was really good and like I said the band was getting better we were actually weren't just playing like three chords and trying to play as fast as we could we actually were really diving into to music and studying and 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 trying to get better so um the and then the last year I was out there we moved from Long Beach to Huntington in Orange County, Huntington mm-hmm. Beach. And I thought things were going so good. I th- I mean, we were opening for big national bands. There was a band, I don't remember the band, Lit. Lit the, of like, course I ate. Yeah. So we got to open for them, and I'm like, here we go, baby. We're on our way. Yeah. On the way. But it's funny, man. It's You get caught up in that. And the like our, our partying and our craving for excess and you know doing drugs and drinking too much and all this stuff man just became it overshadowed the music and the music started to suffer Mm. and then all of a sudden it like hit me like okay my soul's now starting to really take a beating yeah and this is and then there's a critical moment if you want me to get into it right now i'll tell you come on with it go for it so i had we had come home from a show stories radio yeah God is good. Uh, we had we had finished the show, and I I, I came home that night, and I uh, I had smoked a little uh, marijuana, and I had a note uh, sent to me from my dad saying, "Hey, just want to let you know that a letter that I'm thinking about you. I love you, and we miss you at home. I hope you're doing well." They they were they were they were good about not trying to just be all over me. They were letting yeah. me be me, mm-hmm. right? But Push, at the same time, man, pull you back, yeah. They were. They were some praying folks, mm. and he said, "Hey, I read this book, um, and I, I want to, I want to challenge you to read it. And I know a lot of it's kind of controversial. And a lot of people like it. A lot of Christians don't like it, but it was the shack. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's he's like, I want you to read it. He's like, it just kind of opened my eyes up to, you know, kind of the way we." We look at the triune God, the the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the way it was kind of told in this story. And I read it in one sitting. I went and got it. No and, way. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And I, I don't want to credit it to me being stoned and being like, ooh, I'm going to read this whole book. But, I mean, I cover to cover, man. I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is cool. And the next day, it compelled me to open up the Bible, which I hadn't opened up in a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I reread the gospel. I'd read it before, but I reread uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and just um, unpacking Jesus' life and the things he did. And and man, it just started messing with me. Um, mm-hmm. My spirit was just like, <laughs> and I didn't have the support. Yeah, around me, man. Like, yeah, my, they were my friends and my bandmates, but they didn't come maybe from where I came from, where I could. Yeah talk to him like when i would talk to him about what i read and stuff they would just kind of look at me like bewildered like what are you talking about mm-hmm. yeah but man god was god was he was moving big time and i just i didn't really know how to handle that so 
it was a couple of days later. I called my dad and I'm like, I'm not happy. I don't have any joy. I've been chasing this dream that is leading me nowhere. I love music, but it's, I, I forgot who I am. I forgot who I belong to. I, I need a change. And he said, come on. Wow. Home. He said, come on home. And that was it, man. And I told my friends, I got to go reset. That was the word I used. I got to reset my life, man. I got to come home. And my parents were like, you know, come home to a safe haven and let's see. And then, and then God really uh, started doing some really, really cool things in my life when I decided to let him. Right. And open up doors where he wanted you to go. It's amazing yeah. when God's got a call on your life. You can run, but you can't hide. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he can move on you in the midst of of what you think is the perfect lifestyle. You know, I listened to Brian Head Welch. His testimony similar. God started to move on him right in the middle of, you know, corn being on tour and stuff like that. And it's just, wow, just amazing. You can't... Uh, deny that call of God on your life and you have to do something about it or you will be miserable mm -hmm. not doing something about it. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you goodness know? he's a God that pursues us. That's Amen. It. That's it. You know, and um, it's nice to know that none of us can do anything that he's not going to choose to come pursue us. Amen over. to that, babe. So, um, you know, if you're a praying person and... Um, even if you're not a praying person, at any time you can just, you know, you can either be praying for somebody to turn their life back over to Christ because what Bo just said is incredibly encouraging, especially to those of you who are parents, because I know it sure struck a, a chord in my heart <clears throat> that keep praying for those kids and those grandkids and mm -hmm. so forth because God hears those prayers and he is faithful. And then... You know, if you're hurting and you need to cry out to the Lord, then do it, my friend. He is going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. Challenge him if you have to. Say, God, show yourself to me. He will do it. You know, he will do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I, you've had enough of this world. Yeah. <laughs> which sure. has been lately. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, really. That's for sure. I try. I try to keep my... Remembering that I'm holding on to his right hand and not letting go. Amen. Speaking of which, there's a perfectly good guitar sitting over there. There is. But before he does, I want him to talk about the wonderful things he's doing now. Wow, okay. That God's gotten a hold of his life. Oh, absolutely. You put me on the spot there on that guitar, homie. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, bro, but well, we got... I, it's gonna be it's gonna be spontaneous worship breakout in here when it happens. So mm -hmm. you yeah, we better get the talking done right. first. Right. Well we got to a point in your life where, you know, you were you loving music, but you were going down your road for the mm. music. All right. And God brought you back home, all right, and I'm sure there was doors that opened and the kind of music that he wanted you to take care of and the doors where he wanted you to go. Yeah, and these doors were, they were straight up miracles that happened in my life. I, Especially now that I'm a little bit older and looking back, I'm like, still blows my mind. Like, it's, when I came home, you know, I told you, I kind of came home with my tail between my legs, feeling mm -hmm. like I didn't get, I didn't do anything that, you know. And the first thing my folks said was like, well, you need to come back and get, get, involved with church again. And they were going to the uh, Methodist church here in Claremont, First United Methodist. And I went with them on Sunday and the, um, the Sunday, the very first Sunday I got back and they had a worship leader there. And I was talking to him after the service and he was like, do you play? And I'm like, I do. And he's like, you want to come jam with the band? And I'm like, all Ooh. right, I'm not really, I'm like, I'm not really into Christian music. I, at that point, I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought Christian music was kind of cheesy. Didn't hear a lot of Stuff, stuff that I was really yeah, I'd into. I'd be dishonest if I didn't say I felt <laughs> the same way, I, you know, uh, for a long time. Yeah. But he asked me to come jam, and for, so there I was, you know, kind of, like I said, resetting, restarting my life, trying to figure out, you know, where God is going to take me. But in the meantime, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get planted somewhere that I know is good. So I served with the, with the worship team there at the, at the uh, Methodist Church um, for a few months, playing guitar and just kind of being around it. And um, the worship leader at the time, his name was Angelo, very talented individual, great, great dude. I miss him. Angelo, if you're out there, I'd love to connect with you again someday. Shout out to Angelo. He, he asked me, he's like, hey man, there's this band coming to First Baptist Orlando. 
They're called Hillsong United. Have you ever oh. heard of them? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, nope. I, I heard of, uh, isn't there a guy named Chris Tomlin, like passion, stuff like that. That's about all I knew. He's like, no, you need to come check this out. So I went with uh, Angelo, Doug, Pastor Doug Cox, Susan Morris, a couple of these uh, just people that have been um, consistent with uh, First United Methodist in Claremont. We all went out to to this concert. And, and that was your first really— First Christian concert I went to since oh, I was a little man. kid, and my and dad you went to, wow. to, to you, uh, picked a good one. Hillsong United, yeah, because the oh, one I went to before man. that was y'all remember the band Truth? Of course, <laughs> that was the the one I went to before when I was a little kid. My dad took me to see Truth, and he's like, "This is contemporary Ooh, worship." Yeah, but yep. you go to Hillsong United, you're gonna get rocked. Yeah, well, I mean, I I was blown away, and then the Holy Spirit got a hold of me, and just God just said, "I hey, I freaking love you, man." And it, it it put me on my knees. Like mm-hmm. for the first couple songs, I was like, "Wow, they're awesome." Next thing you know, I'm sobbing like a baby, on my knees, just mm-hmm. man. And what was cool was at the end of the concert, uh, this guy comes out on the stage, uh, a guy from India, um, but he spoke with this real thick Australian accent, which I thought was funny. I'm like, I didn't expect to hear that <laughs> voice. <laughs> he starts talking about how uh, Hillsong Church has like a college. Um, mm-hmm. that people can go and study worship music or a pastoral degree or, you know, it was just, and I was like, that would be cool, man. Like, you know, I, I love music. It, it would be awesome if I could find an avenue to be able to, to play for the Lord. And I did a little research and I was like, I'm not going to be able to afford this. Mm. All of a sudden, man, people started praying for me. Um, and I was like, maybe this is what I need to do. So I started asking people, like, hey, you want to help me get to Australia? Two weeks later, I was on a plane by myself. Wow. No way. Yeah. Two, literally. That's what happened Two to weeks later, Derek man. Sanchez. That's what Derek Sanchez. Yeah, William's son. Yeah. Yep. That's what happened to him. He went over to Hillsong and went to the college there for two yeah. years. Yeah. Man, on a plane in two weeks. Two weeks. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was so fragile and I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I just knew that... A, I needed Jesus, and B, I still had this passion for music. And I'm like, man, and if, he if sent God you to the best a... place to go. Yeah, Sydney, Australia. That's the way he is walks. Sweet, man. That's what he works. Amen to that. So what so happened? Says, You're on the plane, and you get there. I get and... out there, man. I'm scared. To de- I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm by myself. I uh, I got out there, and I landed on a Saturday, and then on Sunday I went to church, and I was like, wow. Like, yeah, I mean, the Holy Spirit was mm-hmm. moving, That's yeah. a nice place and there. I was like, you know, I still felt like a baby as a Christian, even though I became a Christian a lot when I was younger. Like it was, I was still like so. How just, old were you at this point, Bo? Uh, I would have been twenty five. Okay, twenty six, mid twenties, and I was I was kind of older for, for than the a lot of the kids that went to the school there. Right. Mm. So I kind of felt like the old, the old guy. <laughs> what was crazy? It was like probably half the the students that went there were American. This mm-hmm. is pretty big college, and mm-hmm. it was a lot of Americans that went there. So anyway, so I mean, I just had it was incredible. It was incredible, man. I got to uh, take some unbelievable classes from personal evangelism. You know, studying the Old Testament, New Testament doctrine, and then we'd have classes like uh, theology of worship, songwriting. Wow. Wow. Worship band, like how to lead a band. Next thing you know, I'm learning how to play different instruments because they really wanted to help you when you go back to your place where you're from or wherever you, wherever God sends you, that you need to be able to, to lead a band. And you don't have to be great at, at a, an instrument, but if you can have somewhat of an understanding to help, he, th- that was a big thing I learned. And um, Well, that explains everything now. I never knew that about you, bro. That's awesome because he can get on drums and show somebody yeah, how to play. I saw play him guitar, the other day on bass. drums, and I was like, I didn't know Bo played drums. I'm like, he's really good. <laughs> that he is. Fake it till you make it, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> man, you don't fake it, man. You bring it with passion, even if it's wrong. 
it's <laughs> it's wrong with passion. <laughs> no, it was awesome though, man. It was a great experience. How long did you stay out there? I was there for two and a half years. The school was two wow. years. I stuck around. I w- probably would have stayed there if my student visa didn't run out. Oh, I mean, I wow. Having, okay. I loved Australia, man. Mm-hmm. It's super cool. Um, glad that God brought me back here for a multitude of reasons, but. Yeah, it was time. Yeah. So I came back and, you know, um, met good old Phil Ramsey. Good old Phil. And uh, he was like, hey, man, real life's kicking in Claremont, man. It's a growing church. You need to come check it out. And jumped on board with real life and started serving with the worship team and just got really connected. And it was awesome, man. Uh, You know, love Justin. Justin and I, like I said, we were close from when I was younger. And Justin lives two two houses down from my parents. So just a good good connection. That's awesome. Yeah. Was your mother his school teacher? No. Okay. But my mom is good friends with his mom. Okay. Who's Georgette, who's yeah. a school teacher. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I was at Real Life, and um, that was going great. And then I had a – just kind of fast forward here. I got a uh, an offer from a, a new church that was starting up in Apopka to come be their worship leader. And also, I didn't think I was ready for this, but to to lead their student ministry. And I was – it's not like I left Real Life because I was unhappy. I just felt like God was saying, all right, this is next in your life. So mm-hmm. did that. It was awesome. Very hard. If you've ever been a part of a church plant, it's tough. It takes a lot of work. We met at yeah. a Popka High School, so every Sunday we loaded would turn, in, loaded turn out. the auditorium. Yeah. Like, yep. Mm. But it was cool, man. I mean, we were we were very accepted, and we were able to basically walk the halls of a Popka High School Monday through Friday and minister to kids, which is unheard of at a public high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just feel like God was all over this. Um, and I learned a lot. Um, it really stretched me, helped me understand um, kind of the, the the heart and the mindset of kids. Like I, like I said, I didn't feel like I was ready to be in student ministry, but that happened. And our pastor just kind of threw me. He's like, here you go, man. This is your thing. And I don't know if you know this, but that's where I met good old O'Shea. Oh, really? O'Shea Reynolds was my high school worship leader in the in the youth band there oh my goodness and it's all coming together now o'shea is now one of our awesome worship leaders at at our church awaken he's Mm -hmm. growing up in front of my eyes it's cool to see i've been Mm -hmm. turning o'shea on to some old gospel like uh clint brown and fred hammond and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so he's been enjoying that that's awesome so yeah so i was there at at, uh the church in apopka and for for three years and the church was going great um there was something that happened with our some leadership of the church, and the church kind of crumbled. I don't want to go into all that, mm-hmm. but it just we kind of learned that you can't build a church upon a charismatic man. It's got to be built upon the rock. And Amen. This, Amen. When this happened, it, you know, it frankly it sucked. Yeah, like, it yeah. Was like Dang. yeah. It's always the church that suffers. Yeah, you know, the church body. You bet. Yeah. But it's cool, man. It, you know, God had a plan, and he brought me back to Claremont, and I got to spend two years at a, a really cool church in Groveland, uh, Hope International. I got to to mm-hmm. um, serve uh, underneath uh, Pastor Tony McCoy, who is such an awesome guy, man. I don't know if you guys know Tony, but – and it, it, it was great for me because I, I got to learn some more – a different style of music because they're very gospel-oriented there. But that was good for me, man. It just yeah. stretched me and helped me learn, like – and I was there uh, for two years, and then Doug Cox called me one day and said, uh, hey, you want to go get a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts? And I was like, sure. Went and had a, a coffee with Doug, and, and he told me all about this new idea that the Methodist Conference in the state of Florida had, that they were going to pour into five churches in the state of Florida to really try to create a service that gears uh, towards younger people, younger families. And I thought the FUMC Claremont was one of the five in the whole state. They were like, this church is healthy and we want to see it get younger as it continues to grow. And he's like, do you want to come be a part of this? And I said, absolutely. It was, it's it's weird, man. Full circle, man. Mm-hmm. I, I've got Pastor Doug's MO now because it kind of started between me and him like that. Hey, yeah. man, you want to grab some coffee? <laughs> come by the office? He just had to say coffee to you. Yeah. yeah. Be you, real. You don't say no to Pastor Doug. It's impossible. <laughs> And you don't say no to coffee. Yeah, well, that's true. So it was, yeah. 
<laughs> he had me a coffee. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Yeah, wow. So, so that's brought you to the present here and now. Yeah. Here and now. And there's a gar- guitar sitting right next to you. I know. <clears throat> it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. <laughs> All right. I do I do have to admit though, it, it as much as an, I enjoy my job, I do it miss jamming a little bit. Well, I'm always yeah. asking you when you're gonna play drums. Well, right. when uh I gotta get a I gotta get somebody trained up. Can I brag on you for a second? Oh well, <laughs> like it'll make you feel strange. No, nah, it's your show, man. No. Nah. Uh no, it's cool that, that that God has brought our past back together, man. I'll say amen to that. For sure. One one thing that that I love about you, Fritz, is obviously you're a super talented musician, great drummer. You're great. I mean, Fritz is our our lead tech at our church, and he's just he's keeping things going, and he just makes my life a lot easier. But also, man, your heart is is better than your than all those other things, man. And I think that's why I don't know, man. Just we're just in a good a, a sweet spot right now, man. I feel like God is really. Well, I couldn't agree more. Aligning things. I couldn't agree more. I, uh, in fact, I was telling Susan this morning. I had my ninety day review this morning, and I'm still working there. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they seem to be pleased with me. But I was saying what a sweet spirit it was last night at rehearsal and everything. How everything is just uh, God is really working on everybody as individuals, and then we come together collectively, and it just. You know, last Sunday was an explosion. Yeah. It really, really was. It was just good. amazing. And I I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Me too. It's a good time. And, yeah. And, and going on that. what you were what uh, Bo was saying to you, um and I've seen I've noticed, you know, that what you do at F U M C uh Philip Ramsey and Corey now does at real life. I've seen Phil behind the drums. Yeah. yeah, I've Phil, seen Phil's Corey playing. Yeah, playing Phil guitar, is a great drummer, mm-hmm. and I've seen Corey play guitar on stage. So just just throwing that out there. Yeah, <laughs> I just uh, we're a little shorthanded on You're technicians, in right? Every direction. <laughs> a little shorthanded on technicians right now. So Can if you anybody play out drums there... and mix the band at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> just strap the iPad to me somehow. I can. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty cool. Well, Bo, Bo, Bo brought his guitar, man. We're going to wrap this thing up with a with a song. What's he going to do? <clears throat> He's going to do a song. Which one? I thought you knew what it was. He's going to do a song, I believe, by Need to Breathe, which I I can't wait yeah, to hear. Yeah, this isn't, it's not really a worship song. This is kind of a song uh, that helped me, like, stay steadfast. Um, and it's kind of like you hear that voice, like, I think I can, I think I can. This is what that song is to me. I, I saw Need to Breathe play this song at the amphitheater in St. Augustine, and it just, it floored me. I, lo- I love the lyrics. Like I said, it's not a worship song, but it is a song just to to help you uh, stay grounded and in, in where God's taking you and just remember to, to rest upon him. And, you know, in Psalms 37, it says, trust in the Lord and, and do good and, and mm-hmm. dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. And it, it's a security song, knowing that when you're when you're with him, that sometimes it it's not always going to be pretty, but you know that you're, mm-hmm. you're taken care of. So that, well, I want to thank you for sharing your testimony. Amen. Yeah. Thank, I thank you, thank you so all for much. having me. Yes, absolutely. This has it was been a ball, man. A we just blessing. talk all night. Yeah. A real blessing. So cool what you guys are doing here, man. God bless y'all. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's always what blesses me the most is when people keep it simple. They don't try to overcomplicate it. They mm-hmm. just keep it straight. Keep it simple. To me, that has the fingerprints of Jesus on it. Amen and amen. Shout out to Mark Sinclair and Gregory Reese. I see you there on uh, on Mixler. And uh, Greg, we... Uh, read your note to us earlier yes we did yes we did i'll be in touch soon greg yep we'll be in touch soon man we're gonna make it happen and we appreciate you writing in and appreciate you dialing in tonight and hope you were blessed i know i was Woo! (laughs) yeah i love i love it when uh we have guests that come in and are talented like that Mm -hmm. and and bless everybody i know it man i knew it was gonna be good i had no doubt no doubt in my mind so 
Well, thanks, thanks for, for having me, man. Yeah, man. All thanks of y'all. Thank you so much. I hope you come back. Yeah. yeah and I hope you go tell an uh, <laughs> T-Bone and all those guys what a good time you had yeah. so they'll come too. I'm sure they will. That's Keep awesome. doing what you're doing. Amen. It's good as long as God lets us. You better believe it. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for session 195. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. God bless. God bless. God bless. Isn't it amazing how a man can find himself alone? Calling to the darkness for an answer he's never known. his own two hands Climbs up on the hill On the rock on which he stands Looks back at the crowd Looks down at his hands And he says I am a difference maker Yeah.